is thirsty. We're back. Welcome to Sweetheart's Arrivals. <sighs> I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. We are back from the Forbidden Desert. Yep. Whew. That's what's on our table today. I might need some of your water. You can have some of my water. It's a good thing that was a free action. <laughs> I guess. <sighs> All right. <laughs> so. Uh, somewhere here on the screen, there should be links to uh, our overview of Forbidden Desert and a playthrough. Right. And that'll be interesting to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And Forbidden Desert, Thirst for Survival is a game right game. Yep. Good for ages 10 and up. It should take you about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you can play two to five players. Yeah. So, um, our review of Forbidden Desert, uh, what did you think of the components? They were sandy and dry. <laughs> sandy and dry. <laughs> That's funny. The components are excellent. They have the plastic ship and all the pieces that fit right onto the ship. Yeah. So that looks really cool. And the cardboard cards are great thick cardboard. And these cards are great too. Everything's great. Yep. Has a great insert. Everything fits perfectly in the box. And it's kind of neat putting this together. Everything kind of pops into yep. place, which is cool. So when you escape, you get to assemble it and ride off from the Forbidden Desert. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. What do you think about the strategy of Forbidden Desert? Uh, Forbidden Desert has um, a nice blend of randomness, tactics, and strategy. So the strategy is pretty clear. Like you're looking for those specific cards that give you the hints, um, like this one right here. And that will show you that somewhere in this row, uh, that piece is. So you just got to kind of not triangulate, but um, figure out where they intersect, intersect uh, to find the pieces. So the strategy is pretty clear. But because of the randomness of the cards um, coming up, and you can do some card counting to know when you're going to get sun beats down and when you possibly are going to get some more of the storm picks up. Right. So there's good strategy there. But then the randomness of the cards and where things shift. And of course, all of these start face down, so you're not quite sure where everything is. Mm -hmm. And then that tactics, the tactics is pretty heavy. What is the best possible thing I can do this round? Right. And then, of course, it's co-op, so everyone gets to help figure that out, mm -hmm. which works quite well. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, what about the complexity? It's not overly complex. The only thing I have trouble with is how the, how the storm moves. Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit tricky. Um, when you're looking at one of these cards here, uh, this symbol is always on the bottom. And you can tell because um, the compass always has the red needle facing north. So these are always on the bottom, and this shows two squares moving up. So it's sometimes a little tricky in your head to think, is the storm itself moving up, and that means the tiles move down, but or no, the tiles the moving tiles down? Move. Yeah. yeah. So in this particular situation where we have the storm here, if we got this card, there are no tiles to move up, which means nothing actually changes. Right. But for some reason, no matter how many games I play, I never can keep it straight. Yeah. And yep. I know I've played games where I've got it backwards before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just something to keep in but mind. It's not overly complex. Nope. It's fairly straightforward. It's just, it depends on where you start here mm. um, and how many cards you're going to have to flip over each time for the game difficulty. Yeah. So that part of the game difficulty, you can scale it a little bit, mm -hmm. which is nice. But it's pretty easy to teach and it's a breeze to set up. Yeah. 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 I've played this with uh, students in school uh, quite young. Mm -hmm. um, really early junior high, yeah. and they get it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. not too complex at all. What do you think about the playability? Playability. Um, it plays fairly quickly if you start on legendary. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so only do that if you have played the game a lot. Right. Um, the game plays quickly, uh, but I do find that it gets more difficult as you add more players. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't like. You do have this marker here, and this does change based on the number of players. So the more players, the more turns you're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're playing with the water carry and you're playing with five people, that's fa five rounds before the water carry gets to yeah. help people again. So yeah. So I find that when you add more players, suddenly a huge part of the problems you have to deal with as a group is making sure everyone's hydrated. And yeah, you need the water carrier to help hydrate everyone, but 
playing the water carrier with five people is going to be boring because basically, what's my turn? My turn's going to be running around and giving you guys water. True. Yeah. <laughs> and and you can't you can't let everyone kind of deal with their own water as their own problem because you know you got to wait so many times, so many flips of the card, and yeah, people are just going to be dehydrated and die. Mm -hmm. So it it I don't find it scales well. It does change the game <clears throat> dynamic for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, the theme of it uh, is quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, the mechanics make sense. The store yeah. moves around and blows sand all over the place. It piles up. I like that it actually does pile right up. It sure does pile up. That's yeah. And it, it looks kind of cool as it piles up. Yeah. Um, I really like the uh, intersection of the two cars to figure out where the piece is. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, game length, it's a quick game. Yeah, which it is. kind of nice. Especially if you... You know, play on hard levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Excellent. So, um, does it have the awesomeness or the cuteness? This game is more awesome than cute. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Th these pieces, these are pretty awesome. Yeah, That's they're awesome. Cool. Yep. That's pretty neat. I like that. But I don't know how cute <clears throat> you can make a game about a desert. It's true. Mm -hmm. The artwork's kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, it fits with the theme perfectly. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Uh, would you rate this poor, good, excellent, or outstanding? This is a very good game. Yes, I would say very good as well. Yeah. Um, it's a, I would say it's an excellent co-op game. Mm-hmm. Um, but just in general games, it's a good game. Right. Yep. Because if you really enjoy co-ops, you're really going to enjoy this game. Yeah. Because it puts a neat spin on it with the sand and how the store moves and everything. Yep. Yeah. And there's people that say this is kind of the gamer's version of Forbidden Island. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to try Forbidden Island again because I, I think I kind of like it a little bit better. Yeah, it's been a long time since I played Forbidden Island, but I remember enjoying it more than Forbidden yeah. Desert. And I don't know if it's because it has less of the escalation of difficulty, maybe? Hmm, maybe. Or if the theme is just prettier and I'd rather look at that kind of game when I'm playing a game. I don't know yeah. what, what it is. For me, uh, one of the problems with Forbidden Desert is when you're playing Forbidden Island and one of the tiles sinks, you flip it over to the sink spot, and then after that, it just goes away. Mm -hmm. And that's all. For this one, you've got to constantly slide tiles, slide, 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 sand, 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 slide, 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 sand, 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 slide, and it's just... There's a certain point in the game where I don't think we're going to win, and then it's almost monotonous, like, oh, I've got to keep doing this, and i got to keep doing this, mm -hmm. and... And at some point, I was just like, you know what? I think we're not going to win. Let's just quit. Mm. So there's that. Maybe that's it. Yeah. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. but. And then again, you can get into, especially with large player counts, you can get into roles where your role basically is dictated by the needs of the group. And for the person who's playing that role, that's just boring. Mm -hmm. That's so true. For me, that's what kind of drags this down. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, did we finish the game as Sweethearts or Rivals? Well, it's a co-op game, so... So I think Sweethearts. <laughs> yeah, Sweethearts. Yeah. It's like, help save me. <clears throat> yeah. You can't help save your rival. No, not at all. Sweethearts, for sure. Yeah, so it's, it's purely co-op, so definitely Sweethearts. Um, especially if you don't mind sharing water from each other's glass. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Excellent. Anything else? I think that's it for me. That's Forbidden Desert. Thanks for watching. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Later. Can't do <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a mess on our mm. game. Oh, yeah. Try again.